So we talk about memory variables and how they stay persistent to a ZBrush session and then they go away when you restart ZBrush. Let's talk about var save and var load. These commands allow you to save a variable into a file that you can later access. So this type of variable is excellent for saving settings, for example. So, I, so my script is called my button and I got a, a data folder here in the same place as my button just so that you know my folder structure here. So let's create a variable. And I'm doing a global variable, so I'm going to do g, my var, and I'm just gonna say it. g, my var is a string variable, and this works for string variables and number variables, not just number variables like the memory variables. And so to save a variable to a file, all I have to do is say var save, Give my variable name, the one that I want to save. That's going to be my var. And then give the file name and location. So I want to save it in data. So I'll say data forward slash. And then the, num the name of my file doesn't need to, to be the same name of the variable. But it's a good way to not to make, not to make mistakes to just give it the same name as the variable. Here. So my var. And then you use the file extension zvr, z variable. Now if I save this and I load this in ZBrush, I load it, nothing happened. But if I go here into my data folder now, I have that variable in a file, g my var. And that variable is this variable up here and it contains the string hello. Now that the variable exists, I can say var load on a, even a different script if I wanted to. And I say var load, and I say the variable name, the file name, which you already have. The, the default here is verifies and loads the values. So we're just going to stick with the default, and I have an I button just to give me what the variable is. So if I save this, and I'll reload here, and I press output variable, it reads the, f the variable that was saved into file and it gives me that variable. Now, if I try to load a variable that doesn't exist, let's say my var2, which I didn't create. Let's save this, let's reload and boom, unable to open file. Why? Because it doesn't exist. So it's good practice, file not found. It's good practice to check if the variable exists before we load the variable. And there's two simple ways to do this. We can use var load and we can use file exists. So let's check out var load first. So if we set the very the last argument here, which is verify only, if we set it to one, it only verifies if the file exists. So we can use that to check if the file exists. The default is load the file immediately. So we can say if, and we can grab this argument here. We can grab this code here. And then if we give it that second and that third argument, one, meaning that I just want to check. I just want to check if the file, if this variable exists. If it exists, then you can load it. And to load, we already checked. We don't need this argument or we can give it a zero there. And so if it exists, load it into my var. So if I now save this and I reload and I press this, I still get an error. And it's self-explanatory. It says variable has been defined but has not been assigned a variable. So a good way to do this is saying if it exists, load it. And if doesn't exist, we can say var def g my var set to zero or something like that. And now we shouldn't get an error. Okay, we get zero. Now another way we can check if a variable exists is by using file exists. So I can say here file exists and I'll just give it an extension, save, and there you go. So file exists is a bit less code. It's maybe simpler. So whatever you want to use, you can use. 
So we saved the normal variable, but we can do the same thing with variable lists. And I'm going to take this opportunity to do something a bit more complex, something closer to a real world application. So let's go step by step. What do we got here? First, I'm defining a string variable list with two positions. And there's nothing in there. I'm just defining a string variable list with two positions. Then in this if else statement, I'm checking if the file exists. So I'm checking if my variable file exists, my ZVR file exists. If it exists, just load that file and we're set. If it does not exist, and this is the first time this script is running, then we're going to set that variable list. And I'm setting position zero to be a low, position one to be space rolled. And then I'm saving it to a file so that next time I, I just have to load it, I don't have to set it. Now, before we get to this routine and why I use the routine, let's look at this loop. So this loop is looping twice because there's two positions in my uh, array of our list. And I'm saying note, I have a loop count here that is going to give me on the first time zero and the second time one, which will access these two, uh, these two positions in my variable list. And I'm saying note, give me the first one when you come down and give me the second one. Now, we, know, we already learned that this argument sets the time. But if I put a minus one here instead of a time of in seconds, what it's going to do is that the next note, well, it's not going to output anything. It's just going to save whatever it's in this variable and it's going to output it on the next note. So what's happening here is that the first time it comes around, I get hello and it saves it. And the second time it comes around, I get world space world actually, and it saves it. Now, when the loop ends, I'll just output a blank note. And this note will have these two notes, one after the other in there. Now, the reason why this is all inside of a routine is so that this loop count doesn't become a global variable. So in my button, all I do is I call my routine and it should output a note with these two variables. So I'm just going to open up where I'm going to save the file. So you see the file popping up as soon as I load my script. So I'm going to load my script. This is my script. I load it. So there's the, the list because file didn't exist. So it did just this far save. It saved that file. And if I press output variable, it's going to run that routine. And I get hello rolled, which is the two notes together right here. This is the output I'm getting right now coming from here. Now let's simplify this to make sure you understand what this note minus one does. So a simpler way to do this is just show you this. So instead of time, I get a user minus one does exactly the same thing. Okay. And I can even do this. So this note will output together with the last note. If I reload, there you go. So I hope you have a clear understanding of this and I'll see you in the next video.